Okay, so this is TK Shazam. I'm just a nerd who likes Tekken and talking about it. This will be a feedback slash critique for Super Hot Fire. Uh, let's just let's just get right into it. So initially, I like how patient you are with approaching whoring, right? Don't you don't need to approach whoring. Most of the time, they will approach you and just kind of kill themselves doing a bunch of punishable stuff, right? Right here, you go for a risky play with the forward forward 2-2, two, two, but it works out, so that's fine. I don't agree with the offensive choice, but it, whatever, it worked out. Here is where I think things kind of start to fall apart, though. So why... My question is, right, why... Why be so passive on... On your Oki, right? You had the knockdown, you were clearly running in. I understand maybe some hesitation about the oh, sword. A spring kick? But you kind of let Horan just kind of get back up without any fear. And that's not okay, right? In this game, you can't afford to just let knockdowns go and reset to neutral. If you get the knockdown, you want to approach in. And then you don't necessarily want to... What's the word? You don't want to run in blindly, right? But you want to maintain an advantageous position. So what do I mean by that? So right here, you get the knockdown. Right here, instead of sidestepping right, you should have sidestepped left. This keeps Horang more in line in the corner, right? His back will be to the wall. By going sidestep right, you let the Horang get up. And as you see here, he starts sidestepping and getting away from the wall. You try to approach and kind of keep this distance, but it's not quite enough right you want to avoid that you want to maintain the advantage you don't have to run in blindly but right here just don't just keep it keep it straight right dash block in and just hold back or just don't 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 advance too far back or don't retreat too far back i mean and see what he does if he doesn't spring kick right away that means you can be a little bit more greedy on your oki in the future if he does you dash block so you can punish it but you needed to maintain this this positioning because his back is going to be to the wall. If he tries to move away, there's going to be more wall than open ground. And that way it'll restrict his movement and force him to deal with a lot more scary Paul options. As opposed to what happens here, which is you just let him get away, right? Got good with the counter hit. Cool. Got the combo. Okay, so right here, you have the life lead. The Horang does not. The game is over, right? From this point on, you should just keep the life lead. Just let the clock run out. Just wait for the Horang to approach you. They'll approach with something stupid, and then you can punish it. There is no reason, in my opinion, you should be approaching. So my question is, what happened? Why the approach, right? Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. You had no idea that you were going to be in distance. But my issue is, why even approach in the first place? With your massive health lead, you could have done the same thing, the same idea of reposition so Horang is closer to the wall and focus on maintaining this sort of advantageous position where you have the life lead and Horang has to start throwing shit at the wall and hopefully something will land, right? But because you tried to initiate offense in an over eager way you die for it right sure we'll let this play out the goal for approaching with paul is going to be dash blocking maybe the occasional wall stand instant wall standing one maybe the occasional quarter circle forward three again the whole goal of paul is that you are trying to maximize the reward but minimize the commitment right what do i mean by that you can approach but don't use moves that are going to leave you very vulnerable right make sure your moves get blocked make sure your moves get or make sure they either get hit or they get blocked right try not to whiff too much because paul's whiff recovery is kind of whack i like the goal you tried to go for the whiff punish i respect the idea i agree with it i think you want to keep up that attitude of like the only way you're going to know and figure out what's punishable and what's not is by doing it right a lot of trial and error here it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, don't don't use this flowchart too much, right? 
if you want a flow chart with that, try wall standing one, two, maybe. Right, wall standing three is faster and will will shut down a lot of things. But the problem is because of the high ender, wall standing three two will often get ducked and launched. Right, so try to avoid that. Hmm. I don't dislike the idea, but I just don't think you were doing enough enough lows to to worry about that, right? And here you just kind of got hall ranked out. So let's let's analyze this sequence a little bit. Again, you assuming you've saved this replay, get to this sequence and start messing around with it. Can you dick jab? Can you do down back four? Can you power crush through anything, right? Like once he once he starts once he starts doing all the string stuff, experiment with what your options are, right? I'm not going to say, in an ideal world, you, you have a lot of horroring experience and you learn this matchup and you lab it out. But obviously, you know, everybody has their own time that, and stuff that they got to focus on. But I think here is you use the replay takeover and there are definitely gaps in here that you can start utilizing like a dick jab and disrupt his pressure there. And then when it's disrupted with the dick jab, go for a throw to disrupt his offense and reset to neutral, right? There's a lot of things you can do to kind of disrupt this pressure going on. It's a comp some of it's real, some of it's like, yeah, these are really good moves, and some of it is just fake. And you're not gonna you have to figure out which is which by using replay takeover and start taking notes and start trying to remember and visualize like, all right, what is he hitting me with that's real? What is he hitting me with that's fake? All right. Let's do the quick breakdown. Let's go neutral punishment slash matchup knowledge combo slash Oki personal opinion stuff. Neutral. We talked a little bit about the neutral. I think the foundation you have is solid, right? You kind of hang back, don't overextend into the whole ring, but then you seem to throw it all away in these kind of big, big gambles for no reason, right? Because it feels like, oh, this is how I've initiated offense so far, and this is how it'll work now, right? Again, try to focus more on low commitment options. And yeah, the reward is gonna be lower, but the idea is that you're not putting yourself at so much risk. And instead you just build up that damage, All right? So options like quarter circle forward three, quarter circle forward down forward three, All right? Other options like that. Low pokes to get some chip damage and slowly wear down your opponent without overextending and then as you build up this chip damage The opponent's gonna get more antsy and try to rush in and, and apply their offense And that's when you start using your keep out like down forward two, quarter circle back four, right? So I like where you started and we, the goal should be to try to keep it as that right If you other other aspects of neutral other aspects of neutral that I want to think about. At this moment, I don't think there's anything like too crazy, right? There could be a lot more quarter circle back four, a lot more quarter circle forward three, stuff like that. But it's it's really just more about you have to reevaluate how you're approaching offense here and just how you're approaching in general, right? Uh, let's go punishment slash matchup knowledge. I talked a little bit about it, but save the replay, take it over, and then start experimenting with, start looking at the frame data of all these moves, right? A lot of the Horangs will have the same flow chart that this one's using, and you want to start analyzing like, okay, what are these options? What's plus, what's minus, what's punishable? What's a high you can disrupt? Where can you dick jab? Where can you power crush? Stuff like that. And little by little, build up the defense necessary against Warren, right? Combo slash Oki. I talked a little bit about it. I thought your combos were fine, but how you approach Oki could be reevaluated. I think you can be a little bit more greedy. Become very familiar with your ground hitting options. Back four, quarter circle forward three. Grounded down two, which is, uh, it's kind of slow because you have to run up and stuff, but quarter circle forward three and back four will be more than enough, right? If the opponent is 
very passive on their defense and they're not waking up and spring kicking, don't just let it, let all your advantage and momentum go to waste, right? Instead of just, like, obviously, you still want to play safe. But instead of just letting the opponent get up for free, try to maintain a specific distance where your quarter circle back four will still reach, your quarter circle forward three will still reach, your quarter circle back two or your other mids will still reach, right? And again, be mindful of stage positioning. Personal opinion stuff. Options that I think are neat, but your mileage may vary. Uh, there's not much right now. I think for right now, I think the focus is rethink how you approach, right? Experiment more with what your other approach options are. Quarter circle forward three. Dash blocking being very critical. Wall standing one, two, if you really want it, that can be kind of neat right? And focus more on maintaining a distance where you're going to let the opponent approach you, but then disrupt them, right? Focus more on how you can disrupt their approach as opposed to just letting them run at you. A lot of this was kind of super vague. Um, I feel like you had a strong start, and I think you want to keep emulating what you were doing in the first round. In the latter rounds, it feels like you kind of lost control and got steamrolled there, right? But I think you had the right idea. Revisit that and reevaluate how you want to approach this matchup with that. If you have any questions, you know, we're always here in the Discord, always ready to help out. Feel free to just ask, man. Uh, but if you can, please upload these to YouTube. <laughs> or experiment with it. I'm not sure. I, the pace been worked out somehow. But this is kind of weird to download. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. All right, man. Have a good one.